Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Actually, if you're watching from overseas, probably morning or really late at night. Which, hey Jordan, where are you going? Oh, shit. Which okay. you're probably Jordan's not. Jordan's going to flaunt his latest purchase. Don't mess the cameras, though. These aren't working. You're right. <laughs> These headphones don't work. <coughs> He's reached his Look final at form. That. This is, ladies and gentlemen, when you make it, you get one of these. Get motivated to work really hard. Razor. Fuck. Jordan, okay, now tell us, how much did it Damn, cost? I have reached like perfect freezer form. Perfect artist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where's your neck beard? I thought Miss Love was supposed to have this chair, not you. <laughs> A common misconception about artists. They can either rock neck beard or 12-year-old shape. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, welcome welcome to the pre-show, guys. Uh, like always, if you've got any questions for any of us. Well, there's a statement here. Oh, here we go. We've got another pod member today. We've got a little guest today. Say something. How good would it be if she was just like... I like how this podcast just turns into dog show and tell. Yeah. And for like... Well, there is a dog For here. the what whole podcast. I wish that... Like, it would be so good if she would just be like... Yeah. She uh, so will behave Afghani too. Why she she's something that... Uh, it's a variety <laughs> of perceptions. And uh, frankly, I'm not going to exaggerate what I know, but I'll tell you what I know. <laughs> Are schmeckos from there? <laughs> <laughs> that was him. Anyway, she's our. Uh, she's pro Afghani. She's our guest of honor. She's no. not pro Afghani. She's pro balls. She's oh, pro wait, balls. Do you think she's not pro Afghani because she hates Afghan hounds? That's a good question. Actually, she's probably just not pro Afghanistan because there's not enough herding animals there. <laughs> oh, there's heaps of goats. They're, they're, I think bad. that's all they have. Sheep. I think that in heroin. The funny thing they is, have. the funny thing is, like, I'm pretty sure she has the. She's like border collie blue healer, so I'm pretty sure she has the intelligence of like a seven year old child. Easy, so you can tell. Be that hard to get her to talk or to have like some sort of foreign policy opinion. Hey, she looks like Do seven year olds have a foreign policy opinion. I think that's. I think they. It's a possibility. Yeah, they're the very strong anyway. at seven. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Oh, the dog got subscription. She's so sleepy. <laughs> dog slav. Uh, uh, very clever. <laughs> Dom Kang is asking, is this the new editor? <laughs> Damn. Um, All right. The first question is, uh, any new Melbourne shows from Tim Chuma? Yes, Tim. There is more Melbourne shows coming out. Don't ask me about the dates, but I <laughs> think that's the case. No. <laughs> it's a pretty big city. I probably should go back. <laughs> and it is, they love comedy there. That's where the like festival a is. Quirky comedy. <laughs> What's that? Complaining about how I'm a victor. <laughs> <laughs> Friendly Jordy's answered the dates question, so you should be all right. Dog wants a pat pat. Yes, we've given her yes, pat. She's gotten enough. <laughs> Melbourne, 8th, 9th, 10th of July. Someone knows. Uh, Sandy, Ooh. that is Sandy. The oh shit! Sandy. Who is oh, that was Sandy. Thanks, Sandy. <laughs> no wonder she watches this pod. <laughs> yeah, she's filling us in. It's the only way she can get a hold of you. You know what? That's sadly true. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, someone's asked a question. What are your thoughts on Gaza? We'll come to that on the main pod. Also, one of the things that well, we'll we'll reach to it when we finish the pre-show. So, any more questions? Yeah, more yeah, CB shows. Them, why man. is just this? Why is the pre-show just admin stuff now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when was it? What What was this supposed to be originally? Um, yeah, I don't remember the pre-show. It was supposed to be a way to like get people to sign up to Patreon. Well, yeah. they're signing up to my Patreon. They're coming to see my show. So. <laughs> Amen, well, guys. Sign up to uh, sign up to the podcast Patreon too. And we've got great news today. Today, this podcast has hit 20,000 subscribers. Wow. Around 80,000 more we get the lowest YouTube middle there is. Fuck. <laughs> you really are. Uh, amazing? I, I've got it somewhere. Shit. But everybody else in Australia has their 100,000 behind them, like 
all American YouTubers have their 10 millionth subscriber plaque. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's the 100. That. But I think I'm kind of just like PewDiePie about it when he got his 100 million plaque and he was just like, what's this? Yeah, it's pretty big. I would expect it to be bigger. Okay, let's get on with the memes. It's <laughs> <laughs> yes. share. When do, yes. you, when, when do you get your first That's when you really make it. Instead of saying razor at the back, it'll say, skip de do. <laughs> When do you uh, when do you get your first plaque? When did you receive your first Friendly Geordies one? Oh, that was years ago. But like, how and many I subscribers? Got one since you get it at a hundred thousand, and right. then you get one at a million, ten million, and a hundred million. million. Have you seen the hundred million one? So T Series has one. And uh, PewDiePie, have you seen the hundred million one? Yes, it looks boss. It what? does look boss. It looks incredible. Like usually, I don't. It's a very materialistic thing, but it does look incredible. Yeah. <laughs> Who the fuck. Has got a hundred million. Is it just? It's just Gordon Ramsay, right? And like, yeah, right, great, great. YouTube, never heard of it, but whatever. So yeah, that- probably. He probably just got it. Was in his office. Went down to the kitchen. Saw someone using it as a chopping board. What are you doing? What the fuck? Everything's just fodder for him to use the f bomb, and then he gets more views, and then he gets, then he gets more views. Then he gets the next That's clock. Two hundred million. Fuck. Okay, we've got the first question. <laughs> That's Actually, how capitalism works. Hell yeah. So this is You're a, learning, miss. <laughs> this is the first question. I think, Miss Love, I'm hey. actually curious to hear your opinion on this. And he just unplugged me. Sorry, go on. Well, yeah, it wasn't work working anyway. before either. So it's, it's the, the principle. Shit. Right, yeah. But um, did you guys hear that they're demolishing Frankie's? I did hear What's this. What's that? <laughs> remember when we went to actually one of the pod listeners' birthdays? Remember when we went to Beatrice's birthday? Mm. That spot. <laughs> Good. Why? <laughs> no, because lot- I'm sick of all these hipster things of hey, do you remember pinball machines? No, I wasn't alive then. Yeah, neither was I. But you've seen movies that they're in, right? <laughs> Don't relive eras that you didn't exist in. But it looks I apologize on his behalf. People have really snide opinions about Paul Keating. I hope they get demolished with Frank. <laughs> <laughs> All right, look, look, we'll he's change, just he's change just tag. Miss, what's your opinion on? What's the right? It's more explosive than Gaza. <laughs> he's, he, it really is. It no, really is. Intended. He's just uh, he's just done a video. H- hamming on Triple J, so he's in a very bad mood, okay? Don't listen to him. Oh, I've got a question for you then, if we're going to bring that up. No, I'm just saying, I'm just giving you the, uh, I'm just giving them the, uh, the some Frankie. background. Yeah. yeah, I'm not in a Cynicism good mood, is but cool. I am in very good mood for, um, what do you think about this title? Cursor calmly dismantles Triple J. Oh, you're doing the you're doing the uh, feedback, are you? Yeah, yeah. Feedback loop. <laughs> admin. What do you do? Uh, yeah, admin, admin, admin. Well, we, we're figuring out the dates you're playing first. Uh, so that's, uh, uh, that's what the uh, pre-show was for, I guess. What admin. do you guys think of that? Someone's chucked in a Panthera already. It's too early for that. We've got time for that. <laughs> Say uh, Triple J sucks. <laughs> Gosh. What the hell? It's not 2006. <laughs> End of fashion I didn't win. Uh, you know what was Horace a really 100. insane thought the other day that both myself and I had? Damn, I am pretty sure that more people listen to this podcast than they listen to the Triple J Breakfast podcast. I could be wrong, but I don't think I am. That's crazy. Uh, how many people listen to the Triple J Breakfast I, podcast? Well, no idea. Like, literally, I wouldn't have a clue. Nah, more than, I mean, more it than is a us. national breakfast program, but Alan Jones at his peak was getting about 150,000 listeners throughout his breakfast program. I can't imagine that an audience that in Sydney was... A fifth the size, getting much better numbers, even though they're broadcasting to Burke. But maybe because they Tony have pretty Burke? much a hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, actually, I bet you Tony Burke is listening to this. Is just like, oh, she'll like it. What's, what, what's this hype train? They're voting on a hype. Uh, is this a poll or what is this? A gift? Doesn't matter. Who cares? Um, uh, no one listens to uh, radio. Is Zonky Zonks? Response yeah. to that. I mean, I have so, to say, I would well, be. You know what? I don't think you're wrong. I thought that everybody did listen to radio, but then I found out that the cumulative audience of radio in Sydney is less than five hundred thousand. Wow, that is not as many people as there are in Sydney. That's about a ten. Shit. So nine out of ten people are listening to podcasts or Spotify on their way to work. Yeah. What happened to Kyle and Jackie? Most o? Of <laughs> so much better than anything else that you could listen <laughs> you to. You have the sense. most fucked opinions. <laughs> most of our matter. numbers come from Spotify. In fact, I really? don't know if this is the case anymore, but at one point, um, our podcast 
was the fifth most downloaded podcast in uh, Australia on Spotify. When? Fifth most downloaded uh, A month podcast. ago. What? Wow. Get we out did, of here. We did drop a few ranks the last I checked and then I stopped looking at it. But at Gordon one Ramsay point it was true. Took us over. Nah, it was like a Joe, Joe Rogan podcast. I think it was that number one. <laughs> Fuck. Wow. So but we're in Australia. with the heavy hitters. Be- yeah, but better in than Joe Rogan. No, I, I wouldn't say you're better. Better than Joe Rogan. <laughs> no, well, Walk we were fifth. He was one. So he, he was always better. Better than, than Joe Rogan. Yeah, All right. Come on. His guests every week are like, okay, should we go to Elon Musk? No biggie. Uh, Edward Snowden? Uh, yeah. Should we get in President Obama? No, I, I don't think we got time <laughs> yet. No, I don't think we're doing that. <laughs> yeah, and we're like, Who are we our t- guests? Uh, Indy. G- George. <laughs> oh, that yeah. was another question. What's the dog's name? <laughs> Indy. 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 Indy is the dog's name. But miss, come on. We need the Frankie's answer. The, the yeah, audience is look, waiting. Yeah, look, I understand. Cynicism is cool. But frankly, no pun intended, we need as many fucking bars in the city that we can get to to, to bust out and challenge 90% of the bar scene in the city of Sydney, which is star bar with plasma screens. I get your point. Hipsters are annoying. Here's my rebuttal. Places that look like a prison where you're scared to go to the bathroom and they're blasting beats from the early 2000s and there's just creeps trying to pick up people in suits is worse. Well, you know, I suppose friends can. Friends can. (laughs) But I say that if you miss Frankie's, just go to AMF Bowling. It's the same scene, plus you get to bowl. <laughs> okay, here's my... <laughs> but am I wrong? Yes! AMF Bowling, <laughs> Chuck's... In fact, AMF Bowling, you can drink there now. That is the 90% of pubs and clubs in Sydney. But they have the pinball machine there. And laser tag I don't think sometimes. They, do. they have bowling. And he said laser tag. True. They've got laser tag and bowling. You're saying that that is better than pinball machines. Look, I don't even know if they work. Let me put it this way. You're sitting in the right chair. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right, that was boss. This man <laughs> has strong opinions about nightlife. About laser tag. Uh, what about this? I wonder why this guy <laughs> likes laser tag. I don't like pinball. I like laser tag. Pew, 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 pew. Okay, miss, what about this? What about this uh, argument for demolishing Frankie's? Yeah. If you're called Frankie's Pizza, you better have good pizza. They fucking do. I nah. think it's very average. It's pretty average. It's you a, ate all you can eat pizza last night. And that you was are, very average. You are yeah, very pizza. upset It's about. a 6.5 on 10. That's inaccurate. Change my mind. Well, what do you think it is? I think it's like a, I think it's like an 8. It's 7.5. It's because you're drunk. That's why you think it's an 8. That's not true. I've played gigs there when I'm so cold sober and been paid in pizza and I was very happy. That's why you're biased. You like it because it's a venue for you. All right, Paul, who's right, me or Ali? Okay, everyone's <laughs> Is that why you hate AMF? It's not because of the laser tag. It's that you can't play gigs there. No, that's what? not why. <laughs> yes, it is. No, it's not. Look, one day you will be one of those uh, little projector things <laughs> that they just chuck on. What, like two-pack hologram? Yeah, that stuff. Hey, so, I've got good news for and you. And you like it. I bet you'll be like, eh, people are still down on AMF these days. <laughs> but, I mean, uh, for Christ's sake, what more can they jam in there? Ali, where's your, <laughs> where's your razor fucking thing? Get yours and just leave me. Then I'll be the contrarian. Well, if the, but how about this? When we went to, we were in Gold Coast uh, a couple of days ago for a show. Yeah, I like how you said that. He yeah. rocked up and he said that he started a new business. He's got a, he's got a truck and it's a mobile venue. He lays out a stage. The green room is inside of the truck. There's like a little coffee machine or whatever. And you can just perform anywhere So you're telling me that's cool, but Frankie's is lame. Is that what you're saying? I'm saying that guy was saying, I'm a big fan of Friendly Jordy's. Like, I really want Jordan to do this. I'll do it Well, that checks out as well. (laughs) That's not wrong, Ali. (laughs) What do you want me to say? Look, if you're listening, man, good on you. The entrepreneurial spirit is rad. I appreciate it. Don't know if I'd play that show, but look- I mean, that's more of an acoustic thing anyway, I'm sure, anyway, right? Like <laughs> Angus and Julia Stone, right? I don't know, but he did look like 10 years older than Tobes. 
Then Torbs. Yeah, Torbs. The, the, the fake name for your friend. And I'm back right. in. It, it could I'll actually perform. just be Torbs. I'm, I'm back. had a lot of drugs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now I'm back in and now I'm back on board. <laughs> All right, so that was our opinion. <laughs> Look, uh, it's really sad that Frank is being demolished because it is a place for people to hang out. And, uh, and, having, and also, main point being, yeah, the pizza's bad. But it's it. They're clearing it for the some public transport. The pizza is not transport. bad. The pizza is really good. You should know better, Mister Cook. Okay, listen. So um, they're doing it because they want to uh, like it, they want to make it like a light rail station or something, right? Yeah. Uh, okay. Now I'm really sad that it's. Gonna be <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's actually a good point. Now, because, because there's one thing that pisses Jordan off more than shit, like hipster bar or good hipster bars, is a shit light rail that is completely pointless and <laughs> developed by the Liberal Party too. Exactly. Let's not but here's the, the thing: the only way he'd be pro Frankie. So you back on board? Yeah, it's, yeah. yeah. it's, it's a good right, establishment. It wasn't that bad. <laughs> 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 now we're just gonna win you over. No, no, I'm already. I knew this information because light, I'm not having this shit. Sydney the pizza light bad. rail sucks, so I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna literally go for anyone. We're meeting in the middle. That is against that. So yeah, yeah, it's a coalition, you know. Honestly, though, why the fuck do they need more of that light rail? Where's it going? It's like we are in urgent need of extending the light rail from North Rocks. To South Rocks. Do you know what they did like, it for? It doesn't go anywhere. That plan was originally coined because UNSW were saying, oh, we fuck. need the light rail because we've got too many international kids and it's hard getting to the Eastern suburbs because there's no train lines. Fuck so it was instance. literally for private interest. And the best thing is so Corona hard. happened and there are no international students. So it's just an <laughs> empty train that Un stops at every <sighs> fucking block. Dude. And it takes you way more to get to UNSW than a, a bus does. And you know what we're really missing what out on fuck? here? Why did they knock down the monorail and then rebuild another monorail? Thank you. They used to have trams in Sydney too back in the day. They, they did, but they had yeah, a fucking they monorail rid of for a reason. Dude, because they suck. They had a monorail. Do you know how rad hey, that was? I remember that no monorail. There's no way you remember it. I mean, I came here when I was a child on holidays and I oh, saw shit. it. Oh, shit. My, cool my bad, my bad. If I they kept the yeah. monorail up and then just put Frankie's Pizza in the monorail. <laughs> that, that's how you hit a demo. <laughs> <laughs> Frankie's on wheels. <laughs> Use one some double cheese. <laughs> oh, fuck. But wasn't monorail- See, all of Sydney change. Uh, Darling Harbour. And of course, Darling Hub. <laughs> <laughs> no one knows, any anyone outside of Sydney doesn't know what the fuck we're talking about. But I think yeah. one of the other reasons- Don't know Darling Harbour. <laughs> no, they know Darling Harbour, <laughs> but they might not know what Frankie's is and why there's a new tram system, but- Probably, um, yeah, that's very true. Too bad. The dude. other thing is Sydney is very poorly planned compared to Melbourne. So I think trams are just difficult to have in Sydney. It, the connectivity is pretty shite. I think the trams, yeah, look, I think trams, if they were just to say one pro Melbourne thing, if they were made like they, you know, like they were in Melbourne, like they're actually efficient and cheap and zippy and they have, they go all around the city. Great. That's because but they're now super they, connected. It's no, I know that. All I know that. Melbourne's a grid. No, I know. So I, you I, can, I know that. You're right. You're right. That's true. But okay. Just like, give me this. They could have, if they're going to do the light rail and see, they could have done it so much better. Like in every way they could have made it. The it, only way it could be and they better. they could have done it for cheap. And for cheap. Well, yeah, that's the, but like the only way they could have done better is if they, uh, if all the trams had that Pakistani truck art. The then hell is that? I would be in approval. What mm. the hell are you talking about? Have you seen the Paki truck art? No. Yeah, it's, it's all right. You have because you've watched Vice documentaries and they start off with Is that. it heaps of the, the, the big guy with the boiled egg just like, Banksy style, like doof, basically, doof, doof, basically, doof. Like, yeah, hurrah, hurrah, right. hurrah, hurrah. and it has like it has funny. You got to double up in that country. You know? It has funny, uh, poetic couplets. Shit like, uh, uh, when I grow up, uh, I will become a Toyota Corolla. <laughs> really? <Fuck. laughs> yeah. Jesus! Ah, oh, that's so sad that they're only there. It's <laughs> shit. The world there needs was, left. Apparently, there was one in Melbourne. They actually made a tram, like a limited special, where they got like a truck artist to come there and they decorated one tram and it went on for like a week. Pakistani truck. Yeah. Well, the art installed right. onto a tram. Oh, that's just such a better scene down there. <laughs> <laughs> and yet I still wouldn't live there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it shit, look, it, it does shit me though that 
man, like have some fucking vision. Like, why don't they, why don't they like improve on the trains or the buses before starting some bogus light rail or just do the monorail again. It's still there. I'm pretty sure they're, they're still hanging out there. It's like- Well, they just got rid of the trams on the top. <laughs> yeah, of it, just converted them. And they chucked them, them onto the light I, rail. And I, look, those actually fit. Yeah, look, well, they're, they're big enough. They're fucking huge. Yeah. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, without any evidence, say that's unequivocally true. Thank you. Uh, Finally, and, some recognition. And I, and I really, I, I just, it's so ridiculous. All, everything about it. It's like, get everywhere you need between Chinatown and Town Hall. No, no, sorry. Central. Which you can just hall. walk. Yeah. I mean, I guess, because I think you can walk there Shit's quicker me. than the tram takes. And why just the and east I'm of suburbs? this doubling up of poverness of there being a stop at the fish markets where people go out to get discount fish. No, no, no. You go into that overpriced car park and you pay the difference of what you would have saved of getting that fish at Coles. <laughs> Agreed. That, that's how it works. Agreed. Yes, yes, but here's a hack for you guys. I'm going to reveal this information only for Sydney siders. If you ever want to park in the city during like a, a weekday uh, when it costs like, I don't know, $50 to park for two hours, what you do is... You go to that uh, mall in Chinatown, Market City. Yeah. You park in their parking. Then you come out and you go to like any little dodgy, small Chinese shop and you say, hey, can you validate my ticket? They do it for $10 because they have a quota of how many people can park for their store. Really? Yes. So there's a hack for you. Uh, how? What, well, That's a good hack. Where do you get the ticket? I was thinking you were just going to put the hazard lights on in the middle of the road. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's, that's, that's cheaper. That's and and you put a sign that says car broken, sorry, and then you can't even get a ticket. So car there's that hack too. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> yeah, Mali has all the hacks. <laughs> ah. That that's is, that well, is that's a, good a way hack. not to get a, a ticket ever. That's not a but bad anyways, hack. But yeah, you, you go to like literally any of those small uh, tobacco shops or... The dodgier, the smaller, the better it is. Mm. You take your uh, ticket that you, yeah. came out of the machine <clears throat> and they'll validate it for you. There you go. Uh, yeah, that's cool. I like that a lot. Now, there was a question for Jordan. Mm. Actually, there's one general comment. Everyone hates you vaping. <laughs> but Fuck that. Hit, hit it. it back. Hit, hit, hit that shit. I'm feeling sick of all the nicotine hits <laughs> yeah, that I had, but just because of that. <laughs> and the second question for you, Jordan, is uh, do you still meditate? Hell. And you know what? Again, like... I hate myself as well. This chair, <laughs> this face stick, my own merch on my shirt. What have I become? You know, I was watching, H3, I'm obsessed H3. with this YouTube channel at the moment called Kings and Generals, and no one can like it unless they have autism. I love that. <laughs> I voice. love that channel. Yeah, there you it's my go. favorite. Yeah, but I bet well, you've you just been diagnosed. Kind of things like the Parthian Empire. None of this. Rome after the decline shit. Kings and generals. Dude, that's a sick YouTube channel. No, it is. It deserves <laughs> shout outs except for... Sorry, just need to get yeah. that out. Dragon. Um, yeah, today, while I was assembling this chair, I was watching one, and then it says, our sponsor today is this clip-on wallet. This clip-on wallet is like upgrading from a normal chair to a gamer chair. I was like, what have I become? <laughs> they weren't even advertising these chairs. They were using it as an analogy. That's how... Final form. Designed I am for that YouTube channel. High budget <laughs> too. They're using that. How much does that chair cost? Well, I got a discount and it was still ridiculously expensive. How expensive? 600 bucks. I got a chair for a meme <laughs> that was $600. Wait, after the discount 600 or before? Mm -hmm. Before. After the oh discount. shit! I was gonna. I was thinking of getting it, but I just changed my mind. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, so All right, uh, Jordan. Good. So uh, before we go, because we're running out of time, do you still meditate? Yeah, of course I do. What are you talking about? Well, that's a question. I'm not asking. Hey, what else I'm getting? A life coach. Yes. Except that life coach uh, said, "Oh, you're a comedian, like Hannah Gatchby." And now I'm seriously considering whether I should get a life coach. <laughs> who's who's that? Anna Gatsby. Yeah. The Nanert. One that was like, don't even this know. is you in don't a comedy know show. And she was like, well, then I'm not a comedian anymore. <laughs> and then next year came back with a comedy show. Yeah. Well, <laughs> in, in fairness to her, Classic if you're move. like, um, look, I, I will, move. I will. This, this needs to be said. If you're like a comedian that has never been successful and then you come out with your last special, which just kills all over the world. How tempted are you for a second special? Yeah, look, 
Everyone made fun of John Farnham over the years for having 10 comebacks, but if the price is right, and the price was always right for John Farnham, and I still don't understand why, what is the American equivalent of John Farnham? Tom Jones is an American, is he? He is, isn't he? He's Welsh. John Malkovich. I don't think he's a singer, <laughs> so I'm going to have to say he, spot on, Arlet. He, he's a psychopathic actor. I mean, he's probably not <laughs> psychopathic, but he looks like he's a psychopath. Yeah, he does. Uh, but also, what an actor. What and an also, actor. And also, is he Miss Love's dad? <laughs> yes! Oh, my God, fuck. <laughs> Pretty much. You are right. You're not wrong about Paper that. Paper said Miss Love talk about the Pez dispenser. There's nothing to talk about. I mean, uh... What's his name? Jordan. The J-Man. Jordan went J-Man, to. Thank you. Went to. Uh, <laughs> God, the ch- I can't look at you with that chair. Uh, uh, Instead uh, of blowing meth in your face, blowing vape. Hey, hey, as, long as long as it's a drug. Joke for you. As long as it's a drug. Um, we went to the reject shop and I bought a Pez dispenser <laughs> because that's what you do. Damn, Jordan, you just got paid out. Sandy had to message me. What? They're saying, Jordan, you need an empathy coach. Yes, I do. Uh, that is a very there, he does it. That's what he needs an empathy. But then coach. again, she is an empathy coach if she's a fan of Hannah Gatsby, and that she is. It shows how much I need an empathy coach. Yeah. I'm just like feelings. I don't know if I'm on board for this. <laughs> um, one of the questions is why do you guys not raid anymore? Here's the thing: we don't know how to. But but he, um, what do you guys think about this? I've been getting so many requests for like the last six months that please start a Discord channel again. Yeah, I've heard that too, but... Yeah. Right, okay. On the condition that we get former podcast Matt to host that Discord channel. What? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Agreed. Agreed. <laughs> Disagree. Disagree. You don't like that? Well, I suppose it has to be a unanimous decision. <laughs> okay, how about this? If we get another 100 patrons, we'll do it. We- yeah. Sucks oh for God. the pitch. In the next 10 minutes. <laughs> no, we can do yeah, it. Yeah, let's make it a little different. How about this? I learn Discord, which I never did before, and I'll start so that I can actually moderate it. Because yes, the- I, and in three years, it'll be an adequate Discord channel. <laughs> I could just say, be. though, <laughs> can I, can I, I need one of those chairs before I can figure it out. Yeah. Can, I, can I weigh in my boomer two cents on this, though? Yes. What the fuck do you want another, like platform for like another like it's so it just doesn't make sense like that we need a platform where we can discuss freely on the internet what like this one you're on right now or the many other ones that are available to at hand that are already that already exist like on like facebook chats or that kind of how many no, do you need like 10 my payouts of you three will be off air as soon as this goes off air they need to be there for all, all eternity the time yeah they just need to pay us out relentlessly. No, I don't. I don't understand Fuck. Discord, but there is some benefit to it. Every game, every what is the every benefit? neckbeard loves Discord. And what the hell it's is better that? than any other platform for some reason? Actually, you're you're all listening now. Tell us why Discord is good. What the hell do you want to yeah, go they'll on? They'll give for? you a million reasons, but we would not just one. Any just one. Just one. Just one reason. I am on board with Miss Love. <laughs> Uh, that's not a reason, but that's not a try. reason. It's not. Okay, so no one's given me one good reason. Booms love. <laughs> <laughs> Voice chat. It's good for memes. Oh, yeah, of course. Good for fucking memes. Yeah, yeah. I forgot the economy. Talk about Australian politics with like minded people. Actually, that's true. I mean, it gives you a very. Just join the Common niche Sense Brigade. Tribal community to talk about. Yeah, join the Common Sense Brigade, or even better, join Alba's Facebook page. <laughs> yeah, do that. Well, that's a better Yeah, yeah. Sure. Who that's our Alba? Discord from now on. Yeah. Albo Facebook if we more <laughs> likes than Albo. I Come think we on. can do it. That's our Discord page from now yeah. on. Sign up. Can you we, did. Can hey, we you go got Albo's page and write Brighton for Life again. Yeah, we got a fluffy AVMs. By the way, congratulations to everyone watching. You got my dear friend Lucy's page from 130 to pretty much 1500. So, <laughs> oh my God. But it's a curse. More than times tamed it. Yeah. And she's very stressed now because she has to create content, <laughs> which but, I'm happy but about. But it would be stressful knowing that you put up a picture of a bird and all the comments are just Brighton for life. Yeah, but that'll fade away. But the thing is that's been cool about it is that like the Brighton for life are fading away. And now it's like, Miss Love sent me here. Actually though, I'm so happy that I am here because these are lovely photos. You've got a new fan. Can't wait to see the next ones. It is wholesome, the channel. Yeah. It, so, it sells itself. So the official Discord. It, though, there is a lot of pictures of Indian miners. 
There's not I suppose that, many. that does explain uh, the end more. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, but maybe more. It's a question. Possibly. And possibly more. Yeah. Wow, that is a guarded page. <laughs> <laughs> Did she beat you in followers? She's very, very close. Fuck. And considering I've been doing this podcast for five years with the all of you of guys, meme. I am not too happy about that fact. <laughs> the power of the meme. Damn, everyone look, uh, signed up to look at birds and Ali has his Instagram to find birds. But, well, it's huge, to, unfortunately. But, miss... Um, yeah, yeah. So it's a defunct Instagram page. No one. <laughs> hey, I, I kind of there's don't a video of him ice skating and I enjoyed it very much. Thank you. Yeah. That was my uh, sign up to this. That was my introduction to the world that I have a girlfriend. So st- the DMs, I appreciate them, but probably <laughs> stop enticing me too much. Uh, fair <laughs> enough. And that is the most western suburbs date of all time. <laughs> it wasn't the western suburbs. It was I have in to Parramatta. say, <laughs> I have. Oh, was it in Parramatta? I thought it was in the city. Parramatta. There's ice uh, in Parramatta. Well, yeah, that is no, the new CBD. It was It was rollerblading. I thought it was ice. Well, either way, it was very nice. Very sweet. All right. Yeah. Um, but anyway, go on Albo's page. That is Albo's Facebook page is our new Discord. Just figure that out. <laughs> All right. Look, um, <laughs> should we then move on to our break so that we can come back with the main pod and discuss all the juicy stuff? Definitely. Gamba addict. Of course, there's ice in Parramatta. Eh. Not bad. <laughs> Not bad, Gamba addict. Ali. Yeah, no, I've changed my mind. I like the idea of a Discord. We need more of that. <laughs> yeah, maybe you're right. You're saying, but we're not running it. Like, I don't know. First of all, I wouldn't know how to run it if I if I had to. Secondly, I don't want to. Right, guys? Are you, are you in agreement? Yeah, you, you, you're free, man. You can do whatever you wish. It's just so many of them. I am That's a That's the one thing where both <coughs> yours and mine's laziness crosses over. Yeah. The don't net. want to know about new technology. Nah, man. I, I, what else do we know? We've already got fire and the wheel. What else do you know? <laughs> and pop tarts. Like pop tarts. Nice. Invented probably before the wheel. <laughs> one of the most. One of the most Dude, stressful. They're things. really good. Yeah, they are really good. <laughs> one of the most stressful things I had to do all week was when the stick asked me to make him a moderator on Twitch, and I was like, "Well." I guess it's going back to the drawing board to figure out how the fuck you do that shit. Yeah. Hey, Steve, if you're listening. Hey, Stig, you're doing a good job if you're listening. Yeah, you <laughs> we are doing we a don't good commu- job. I don't communicate with you. You're doing a bang up job, man. I like the uh, thumbnails and the edits. Anyway. <laughs> the Stig thought at one point, I don't know if Stig wants me to reveal this, but the Stig thought at one point that he had disappointed you, Miss Love. What? And he was asking, is Miss Love, no, is Miss Love kind of angry Stig, at you? Stig, listen, whether I'll you're I'll reviewing you motorbikes or cutting up clips, you'll never let me down. Because you said that. I hate this whole rat race to get more views and put up bullshit thumbs and highlight the characters. And the stick was like, hey, that's my job. Damn, why did I say that? I probably, What I meant to say was- Because you were being I, boomer slove, that's why. I think yeah, what but I was- also just remember that Mislov changed his opinion from Rod being a has-been to being the greatest leader the world has ever <laughs> that's seen. That's not what I In said. the span of 10 minutes. So- <laughs> He's not far off. may have disappointed him for a second. Yeah, look, exactly. I'm just a Labrador, like- uh, like, uh, who knows? Next week, I'll probably hate you again, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. We'll be right back. We'll no, be dude, right back after it. the break with the main part. Love your work. Putting on pants. Will Indy do the introduction? Yep. Hold on. Don't be shy. Welcome back to Kings and Generals, the podcast. You always wondered who the voiceover was of this YouTube channel. Now you know. Please subscribe so we can have more bones. (laughs) (laughs) You're famous. You're famous. Can we make a can we make an Instagram page for Indy as well and get like Well, that's basically mine. (laughs) (laughs) Alright, welcome to the Friendly Geordies Podcast. We're very happy that you joined us today. We've got a Full podcast filled with very exciting segments. And the first one is, Miss Love, I think you'll appreciate this segment. For the first Frankies. time. Frankies. <laughs> Frankies. <laughs> Sorry, Talk about Frankies in the pre-show. If you want to know more about that, then uh, become a patron. Um, the first one is, Pentagon has just confirmed a UFO. 
Tell me more. Fuck so yes. look, throughout, there were uh, reportings that I've seen this uh, uh, this unidentified flying object, and always the response was, "It's a smudge on your camera screen. Stop it." But right. for the first time, Pentagon has said, "Yep, the video." So some marine can't remember his name. I think his name's Campbell something. He uh, he was um, he was recording a footage on a thermal radar, which is you know the one that captures yeah. heat. And what you could see, I've seen the video. I've seen the photo, actually. You, you have? So it's like yeah. a s- spherical slash pyramidish object. And it's coming at an extremely fast pace, goes straight into the water. And here's the, the oh, crazy shit. bit about it. It has no debris. It was not destroyed. Anything in like this world's physics that go- hits the water at that speed will leave traces, but not this. So whatever it was... It's working at a... The, the physics laws are completely different for this. There are several theories. I can get into the theories, but what do you guys think about this? Do aliens well, exist or what? I work? think I should precursor by saying, once again, Jordan is in the right chair. Yes, <laughs> finally. <laughs> Couldn't come at a more opportune time. It's just like... Is that chair a UFO? It looks like alien debris to me. Sorry. Yeah, you if you zoom in on the footage, it just has on it right there. Oh, of course, it was razor. No, no, sorry, sorry. Pentagon Look, denies it I, once again. I love this stuff. I, I, I'm I, just, I love suspending my, you know, disbelief at, at these times. I, I think it's unequivocally a UFO. What do you think? Well, it is a UFO. Well, it is a UFO, but I'm just trying to figure out what alien from Men in Black it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And that Democratic candidate that was laughed off the stage and his career run as president was stopped because he said that he's seen a UFO. Joe right? Biden. And everyone started laughing at him. It. <laughs> <laughs> it was a <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you know, just Malarkey. Just the aliens please. exist. We all know that. <laughs> Malarkey. Who yeah. was it? Unidentified to him is anything that isn't the Hindenburg blimp. <laughs> <laughs> Quantish, yeah. <laughs> Fuck. But so, do you guys want to hear what the theories are? Yeah. Yes, do you have any? Please. I mean, one yeah, of the me. theories is, and these are all the rational theories. One of the theories is, it is actually a drone that is being used by a foreign power. I knew Tonga was up to something. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. But then the just a Tongan. The problem is. <laughs> And, and like Do a <laughs> code name China, <laughs> yeah. But, but the, the problem is, if Chinese have invented that kind of technology, we're done. They've won. <laughs> then, <laughs> That's like, true. If they have managed to defy physics, then yeah, uh, yeah. Have the, uh, World War Three is over. True. Um, but that's one of the theories. The other theory is, it's uh, it, it's it's being used by Pentagon. Uh, as like this um, to basically get more funding for Space Force. Ah, but what is it? But, no, Even if I've seen a lot of unidentified flying object footage, and I'll admit a lot of it does just look like a smudge on a camera. <laughs> but every now and then you do see something that is unexplainable. Yeah, as in it's going in one direction, it goes in the other direction. Wow. I don't know if helicopters can do that. Well, yeah, but the the general yeah, consensus no, no. about those was that, um, and I've got this from the Joe Rogan podcast, um, that apparently there's a lot of aircraft that the American military uses that are kind of classified because they're still in their developing stage, and they look like UFOs. Mm. There's a few pictures out there because it yeah, has come can out. Can they move like UFOs? Apparently they can, latest technology. But we don't know. That's one of the... Uh, theories that is being posted for that, but this well, is that not actually that kind of ties into Alex Jones's theory that everything that you're seeing right now it, it's really from the fifties. That's the technology. Uh, just think about it like that. We're about uh, a century behind mm. in what they actually release. Mm. And then he showed Shit. us footage from the fifties of I think three D goggles that existed. Yeah, and they did look exactly like my Oculus. Mm. Just adds more theory to the fact that I should be sitting in this chair. <laughs> <laughs> but come on, <laughs> Sorry. it does. It does seem like that is a way of explaining the U part in UFO. I think Jones is onto something here. 
I mean, there's no doubt that they that that it is a time release of technology. I mean, e- even if you look at the fact of like the iPhone technology, the internet, you know, being essentially like a government hoarded invention, FBI, CIA, whatever it was. Look, all of that might be true, but there's the last theory that it's aliens. Mm. We're missing the main. We're missing the elephant in the room, and. The Pentagon has basically said the the video is real. It is a UFO. What do you think? I think, well, I don't know what to think, but here's my question. Let's assume for a fact, let's assume for a second that it is aliens. The question then becomes, why are they trying really hard to hide themselves? If you have that level of technology, well, see, wouldn't you just like announce that you're I've here? been Maybe dabbled. it's just like we're <clears throat> North Sentinel to them. That's exactly what I was going to say. I've been dabbling with this theory here and there upon the ponderings of my mind that uh it's a trippy thought that everyone you know you think about aliens like oh they're gonna invade it would be i think the trippiest thought is 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 uh that aliens are so uninterested with us and our level of civilization that we're like ants yeah but what are they doing in hawaii then coconuts don't know. <laughs> I mean, he, well, he, he, how about this? This is my personal. But theory. that is a possibility. It is. Coconuts. It is a possibility. That's no, like not actually, the coconuts. That like <laughs> I don't know what they're doing. They're probably like burrowing to the center of the ocean to get the ink from a giant squid because they realize that gives them better better orgasms. I don't fucking know. That's actually the Michio Kaku <laughs> theory. Yeah. Hey, the Michio. Do you know the Michio Kaku who's like this? Uh, uh, one of the OG in intellectuals of the dark web, but like um, he was more about science and why Einstein is amazing. I just he said that wow, the aliens. What an edgy opinion! <laughs> no he was good to the is this the guy Dome Kang loved? Of the net. What? Is this the guy Dome Kang loved? Fat Fist Freddy? <laughs> no. He was the original of the intellectual dark web. <laughs> that guy is really dark. Yeah. I reckon he still got 50 followers on Facebook. Oh my yeah. God. He was saying that it's, it's not- Lower than Forest Hall levels. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but way more woke. Yeah. His thing was that it's not that the aliens are hiding themselves from us. It's just that we're too stupid to know that they're there. He mm. was saying that he so compared black. humans to like a uh, goldfish in a bowl. The goldfish just revolves around. It doesn't even realize that there's a, you know, there's a human behind it. Well, apparently when the Mayflower rocked up to the New World, uh, Indians couldn't see it for a week and it took their tribe elders a long time Whoa. of staring out there and thinking, why are the waves moving like that? And then <sighs> finally their brain could comprehend that there was a huge wooden boat there. And let's, wow. let's just think about the wow. gap in technology between a wooden boat and something that can dive into the ocean and not leave debris. Mm. Then again, why is a marine looking at it? They're all pretty dumb. Like they're called jar heads for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> but that is a good point. I mean, well, maybe it's not a marine. It's someone. I don't know what it is. I mean, some, uh, some even guy. even even the idea that like you know, I mean, I think that we use isn't it like we use like twenty percent of our brain. Capability? That's a myth. I actually looked really? it up. No, we don't. We use most of it. <laughs> ah, okay, that's a that's myth. Like I think a we thing. use twenty percent of it when we're watching TV. Right. Well, uh, it, but collectively we use most of it. But the mm. doors of human perception are, I mean, that example is pretty, pretty uh, poignant of that, that something can be in front of your face. I mean, it's, you could, you know, it happens when you're looking for something. How often are you looking for something? And it was in front of you the whole time. Oh. What about- yeah, and that's salt. <laughs> You've seen salt before. I know. A few times at least. Definitely. So, so like, oh, I mean, I have, but uh, <laughs> I don't think it's an un- unbelievable thing that, uh, you know. We, I reckon that they've definitely out contacted there. this planet before. And I'm just pretty much basing that off this one Discovery Channel documentary I saw when <laughs> Discovery Channel started taking a real nose dive. In its <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You know when they started doing documentaries about our mermaids real? Ah. Kim Kardashian was like, really? That's crazy. I knew it, bitch. <laughs> then again, I was one of those people because the fact that they showed a skull of some ancient Egyptian priest that made it go more oblong shaped by putting a bunch of bands on it to shape it over right. time and then showed them some mythology that they had, the same as Aboriginals here, that there are 
something that looks exactly like those big headed aliens that lived in the cracks and taught them about hunting. There's a lot and of this one taught them about pyramids and they're just in exact alignment with stars. That's bizarre. That's bizarre. Let's just put it this way, as Ali would say, it's a theory. Yeah. It's a theory. What about this? This is my theory. And this yeah. is probably not accurate, but hear me out. Hey, wait a sec. Ali is short for alien. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> okay, how about this theory? Look, so clearly, you know, like we've evolved over the years, right? So we've yes. gotten better at understanding our nature with like hundreds of thousands of years. And because the uh, the universe is expanding, whatever aliens are, are clearly way ahead of us. If they are managing to come down here, they've been... They've been around a lot longer than we have, essentially. So they are way more advanced than us. So in pre-scientific revolution age, they would have probably contacted us in forms of like what we now say, God whispers us or whatever, the, the, the flame, uh, flaming bush of Moses. But since the scientific revolution, they've been like, okay, now they are on the path to come to where we already are, but it will obviously take us like thousands of years mm. more. So then they're like, they don't want to fuck with us because they're like, okay, now they're on the right track, so they'll move on. Could it, be an experiment. Yeah. Could be that they need squid ink. <laughs> squid ink <laughs> is very cool. It could be either, honestly. It, it, it not well, that's the other thing. It's if they're <clears> beyond <throat> our comprehension that we can't see them, surely the reasons for them contacting us are beyond our comprehension. And it's that's, not that far off to think that they have just created some device that is near impossible for us to see because my snake, for instance, mm. sees the world in a completely different way to I see it, you know? Are you calling that's what I'm saying. alien that's what I'm snakes? Saying. Like, it's easy to have your pre your, 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 your perceptions when, you, when you're, like, you know, you're on a different plane. Like, different animals have different... S- Sense like ability to see, sense like that. Yeah, you know. even this dog. If we turned off all the lights, apparently the dog wouldn't really even notice that the lights are off. Damn, because it's sleeping. She has better eyes. She than is us. sleeping at the moment. That's not a good example. But <laughs> if she wasn't, they see light she's... though. They see light. They see light, but apparently at dark time. Is that the scientific word for it? <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, <laughs> or as otherwise known as night. <laughs> yeah, as known as night. They can see objects mm. five times better than we can see objects yeah. in pitch black. And their eyesight isn't great. I think our eyesight can distinguish more colors than theirs can. Colors. But that's yeah. apparently because like, we needed to know uh, no, we traded off night shit. vision. Yeah, for we fruit. traded off night vision for fruit. Yes. What? Yeah, evolutionarily speaking. <laughs> you know what? Maybe <laughs> that's, that's incredible. Because my mum, <clears throat> she reckons that she's lived in a couple of houses that have been haunted over her time. <laughs> and that's no conspiracy. Just, Australia's definitely got some haunted places. But anyway. But she was saying that facts. somehow the dogs are always first to know. As in her dog, which is very similar to Indy's used to be growling at a corner, doing that thing with its hair off its back. Right. Like, eh. Jesus, that'd be bizarre, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would be. Bizarre. On that note. Or maybe the dog was kind of crazy. That happened. Yeah, it's too. a possibility. On that note, maybe though. She also saw the ghost, but then again, my mummy is also crazy. <laughs> <laughs> on that note, <clears throat> someone showed me this clip of this guy that was on one of those shows that was like, my house is haunted. <laughs> and how good's this? How like 2021 is this? He was like certain the house was haunted. And like, it was like, we'll leave some salt out. And it came back in the morning. It was like, leave this place. And this <gasps> guy, this guy was like, I'm two mortgage payments off, man. And just went, did that. And just wrote like, no, you leave. And was just like, I'm going to bet. He didn't give a shit. <laughs> Boss. <laughs> Fucking with the the, the <gasps> dead. Holy hell. <laughs> Ultimate fuss. <laughs> and it wasn't like a comedy show. It was one of those really serious ones. It's like, <laughs> we are going to help you. And he's just like, yeah, I need all the help I can get. Fucking bullshit. Uh, he, he, we, we, Mambo t-shirt says, <laughs> <laughs> animals staring at walls means they're sick or dying. Did the dog die afterwards? Mm-hmm. 
No. So Mambo, like... He went on to live a long and happy life of 12 years. That is long for a dog. So right. so Pretty now, average. Mambo, is that it? means that you are irrelevant just like your name now. <laughs> but you know what else? It's probably the guy because who made Mambo. Yeah. Like, That's something you. we were discussing in the previous pod, <clears throat> that when people are crushing over, the only people they speak to are former friends of theirs that died, that come in and visit them, and I'm assuming John Edwards. <laughs> and John Edwards wasn't in the room. I, I, maybe, maybe that was one of Mum's housemates. Who knows? Maybe he had a stint in Australia Let's for a be while. Honest. Just being like this Hollywood thing isn't working. Wait, Let's be John honest, Edwards it wouldn't be surprising, the- would it, if your mum lived with him? <laughs> no. The guy from like Nick Cave's band, John Edwards. Is that All from Twilight? Stars. What? John Edwards? No. Jesus. You, do you know John Edwards? No. You, Google him right now. I bet now. you know him Google as. Him. The failed presidential candidate against Obama. <laughs> American television personality. Is that him? Mm-hmm. Never seen the guy. What did well, he Isn't ever it do? amazing that he hasn't aged? Because That man's <coughs> never crossing over. Because he is All right. a so time traveler. I learned something today. Dude, this guy is the guy that goes in a room and is like, I'm getting something here, a woman. You, yes, oh, wait, a this woman. Is the, the haunted guy, haunted house guy, is it? No, he the He goes afterlife. around with like a meter and says, yep, definitely ghost. Mm-mm. He's on Kyle and Jackie O quite a lot. All right. And every time someone rings he up, does this. Look, nothing but I'm getting something. Pakistani. Okay. Pakistani, I'm getting a dr- car dri- driving, driving car. And you go, yeah, I saw a ghost in the desert while I was driving once. It's like, that's what I'm getting. That's what I'm getting. I'm sick of people making fun of him, though, because even if he is cold reading, that's still impressive in itself. Mm. You're just not impressed because you actually are psychic. But to the rest <laughs> of us mere mortals, the fact that he can sit there and be like, is someone in your life died? No. Well, sh- surely someone has died. Come on. Like, yeah, actually they have. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Everyone has had right. someone in their family die. No, yeah. look, there's a criticism that he's just a bullshit artist, but Jordan's saying that he, he still has the talent to be able to, like, you know, like assess people's reactions pretty vividly and get yeah, to some Yeah, but Jordan epic- sleeps outside a house because he's afraid that there's a ghost inside. That was a kind of a scary man house. who's afraid of ghosts, but not afraid of the rat that the state brings him. <laughs> for possibly uh, yeah, I know, that's him. So hey, there's a guy outside your house trying to kill you. It's fine. I'll just go home at the most sketchy times of the night. On my own. It's cool. And I'll leave the doors open. And I'll leave the doors unlocked. <laughs> and then like, yeah, the, a really secluded, really beautiful part of the Blue Mountains. Ghost. Yeah, but- look, I am Shaggy from Scooby-Doo. Mm. I am. I shouldn't be part of that, uh, you know, that, that van, but yet somehow I am. I don't know why I'm so scared of ghosts. I really don't. Well, and yeah. I don't even know if I believe in them. I just know that I never want to meet one. I don't know what it is. Apparently, they can kill you even if you don't believe in them. Huh? They can kill you even if you don't believe in them. Well, that allayed my fears. (laughs) As long as they can kill me. I I just don't want the salt saying, get out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the scary part to me. You know, there was this movie. I can't remember which one it was, but there was this ghost of a witch. And then the kid comes in crying to the parents saying that there is a witch talking to her. Just telling her, like, you know what you should do? I think you should kill yourself. That's so much scarier to me than a ghost wielding a knife or trying to possess you. I told you the story about my ex's mum when she was a little girl with her sister living in England. There was just a boy that would cry at the end of their bed. And there was like, we would talk to him all the time and play with him. I know. And they were so passive about it because I said, what about (laughs) that ghost that was crying at your bed? And their response was, ghost Oh, yes, Tommy, Tommy. Yeah, he was all right. <laughs> <laughs> so amazing. What is that response? All right. I need to learn from them. Have you guys seen, just on that note, <clears throat> have you guys seen that footage? It's like a YouTube video. It's like, uh, it's like uh, creepy shit found by drones. And there's some that are kind of lame, but there's one that is irrelevant of if it's, a ghost or a witch, that's completely irrelevant. Even if it's just a person, it is creepy. It's this fucking forest in the middle of nowhere, uh, just flying around, like just forest for 
miles, miles, miles. And then there's like a figure, basically just looks like a witch, like with this cloak on, this white cloak, just been like, can't see it. And the, and the, the, the fucking thing's just like, bzz, bzz, and just kind of goes down to it. And then like the figure just kind of like, you never see its face, but kind of like looks and then just sort of like, and like scurries away into the bush. And it's like, if that's a person, what are you doing? <laughs> Looking for fucking- Why are you so scared of getting shot down? At like, are you, are you, like, I don't think you're dressed to, to for like a maple tree, you know, sapping. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just yeah, so yeah, weird. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Maybe it was just like a, you know, Opeth fan. I don't know. Probably was actually. But like, what, what do they do, these Opeth fans? They just go into the forest alone and just- like conjure up spirits alone. Because the only people that dress in a white cloak are druids. So it basically is a witch. Wait, what is a druid? It's just a male witch. Oh. Damn, they're called druids? Well, I don't know. I Isn't that, that the, the priests in pagan times? Isn't that their version of a pope? The guys that used to sit around Rosetta Stones and... No, not Rosetta Stones. The, oh. the circular stones. That oh. like, Why are they in a circle? <laughs> Did somebody Why put are them? some of them knocked down? Is it because they're thousands of years old? We'll never know. <laughs> Man, unsolved mystery. But it's so lame. Right, we we figured the aliens bit out, so let's move on to our next topic. Um, fat dyke on crack. I figured that out. Definitely. Fat, I don't know. What do you reckon? Fat dyke on cracks. Not having a bar of it. Can we skip this bullshit? What do you want to talk about? Discord? Something of yeah, worth? She's yes, on a crack, yes, so she doesn't know what's up. That's so much more interesting than a potential witch. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Aliens? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No. I know, I know. <laughs> Memes. <laughs> yeah, I know. Okay, just think about that druid thing running away as a meme. Yeah, now, you int- now yeah, you're yeah, interested. You're on board, are you, fat dyke on crack? Let us know. <laughs> <laughs> and the dog was probably fucking with Jordan's mum for the meme. Oh. Yeah. Sure, thank you. Thanks, yes. Pat Dark and Crack. Thank See, you. you can make anything you truly yeah. Do you guys, uh, what's his name? Uh, Donald Glover slash Childish Gambino. You're said aware that, of him? Said that Hollywood is shit because people aren't taking chances because of PC culture. Damn right. Mr. Love knows what's up. He's totally updated with the news stories. And he's right, in but my opinion. But don't you think he's like low-key responsible for that? Well? I don't know much about his shit. Was he in Community or something? Or He was in Community. He Apparently, everyone says he's extremely talented. The problem is I no, don't know his work. He was like I've that. That video, clip, that video clip he did was like, everyone dies in America. Bang, bang. Did you know there's guns in America? I just didn't bang. know that. So yeah, thank you so much. He's kind of adding. I don't, I don't get it. I don't get him, and I'm not a huge fan. And apparently, that's blasphemous. People love that guy. But the point isn't what he said. The point is that there is a big problem in Hollywood. Um, people are afraid to make movies straight up because they don't know what particular what hot they're allowed button thing to make is going to get them canceled or not even just canceled. Like it'll just bring negative publicity. Everyone's just too scared yeah. to even make movies. Yeah. Now. Rome is well, he's either the most per, uh, perfect person to be talking about that or the least perfect person, because that man is just a giant example of cancel culture in action. But is he, I don't know enough about him to make that judgment. I thought he was, but I don't know. Is he? I don't, know. I don't know. That's what you were saying. His no, whole no, no. He's like, did you know guns are bad? Well, look. Well, it's not yeah, a, no. It's, yeah, it's not his whole shtick. It's just that, like, obviously, he, you know, that was his. Uh, I don't know. I mean, look, the whole, the whole, like, Rome's just falling. Just that's that. No, it's so not about falling. But but where does this end? Because eventually, commercial end. interests are going to come in. Like investors are going to be like, hey, where is that next superhero movie? <laughs> we need money, so that will where always would come. it end? Yeah, that, that has come. to come, right? So there, but but that's that's just one hundred and one. I mean, watch any of the new Marvels, and it's just like it's just I don't know. It's Al Jazeera with Spider Man in it, so it's like hey. yeah. Look, I think we all know the answer to that. The fact that Hollywood has this, mm, I don't know what's culturally sensitive and what isn't. Let's just make another Texas Chainsaw Massacre where people are getting ripped apart by a chainsaw. <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> nice, wholesome, family fun content. Yeah. But you know, even with that, like, I don't want to make this controversial, but 
I could totally imagine a horde of Twitter followers being like, why did you kill that particular Indian man first? But that's the thing. Why it never not ends. kill the white man exactly. first? This shit never, so you, it, it, exactly. This should never... Exactly. It gets... It, like, you start, you start going over these ridiculously superfluous subjects with a fine tooth comb. And it's like everything can be uh, interpreted as how a person individually sees something as uh, yeah, individually uh, offensive. You can do it in any way. You can you, like this table. You could, if you were good at it, you could really just be like, oh my God, there's a million ways to be offended or have, you know, well, you sitting here is one of the big reasons. Exactly. I'm yeah, offended. That. Exactly. You just paid out Al Jazeera for no reason. I had to keep quiet about that shit. Exactly. See, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> Microaggression. So it's like, like, it's it's. I think it's a dangerous game. It's bizarre. And also I thought art was supposed to be able to transcend these boring things that like, didn't people start to create art to, to transcend the discourse? Like, everything now is political. It's like, can I, is there one realm I cannot be political? Anything. An ice cream stand? No, no. I, okay. An ice cream stand is the, the, the Senate now. Senate yeah, ice cream. You're right. You're right. I well, they do sell gay ice cream bit I'm for- saying it's everywhere. I'm saying that it has to be like, it, like every single element of society has been forcefully injected with, Postmodern theory and objective. Like, I, I just think it's it's bizarre. That, that the, I, I think we're yeah. missing the forest for the trees here, which is why is Childish Gambino talking about directing movies? I'm sick of this jack of all trade shit. Yeah. Can he just <laughs> pick an art? But a lot of people stop, stop, stop paying out Fox, I was like, I'm a comedian, I'm a singer, I'm an actor. But he sort of pulls it off, right? No, he doesn't. Uh, okay. Just get good at one. What is this <laughs> celebrating hipsters? Well, that what say, do you, uh, director, what um, do you think I'm of, an artist as well. What do you think of Dave Not Grohl? Not good at any of them. What do you think of Dave Grohl? I think that Dave Grohl is the greatest musician <laughs> of all time. <laughs> what, does he do other it. things, does he? I don't even want that man making sandwiches. He should pay someone else to do he that. Would. Just focus on rocking. Hey, that's a cancel worthy uh, opinion. So why shut it? Because people love him. He's God. Who? Dave Grohl. No, Childish Gambino. I and was about to say. <laughs> <laughs> this is getting too far, man. No, look. Well, what's anyway, her opinion? What's her opinion? Well, so I was watching um, the guy. I'm who agreeing wrote, with him, by the way. It yeah, has no, no. Gone we all are far. agreeing with him. But yeah. like, um, uh, I was watching uh, an interview of the guy who wrote Game of Thrones. What's his name? The guy uh, who wrote the book. Oh, books, yeah. The, 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 the sailor, the, the fat, fat sailor. Yeah, J.R.R. Martin or something. Yeah, yeah I don't know. George just Miller or J.R. Martin. We all know you want to be J.R. Tolkien. Just change your name. Just change your name. He's already was, there. <laughs> he was like, he was asked a question. He was like. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oh, shit. And lose some weight. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's you can't. Like, I take that. I take yeah, that. Right, you can't write <laughs> fantasy work in the 21st century and not be obese. He's a successful <laughs> neck beer guy. Leave him alone. <laughs> Got body positive. Go on. Uh, but he was saying that uh, one of the things that was asked. Mary's Lizzo. Yeah. One of the things that he was asked during like a talk was <laughs> why are all the, um, the, the slave army or something, why are they all black? To his, to, and his response was. First of all, they weren't black. We filmed it in Morocco. And so we had to get extras from Morocco. And you can't find that many white people in Morocco. So that's why they were. And also, I would, I would imagine that if he's being. Because Game of Thrones is sort of like an allegory of history. He's just basically like played Image of Age of, Empire, Age of Empires. And no, they been were like, white slaves too. Oh, the, no, no, they were. But surely there was predominantly black slaves throughout well, history. At, at, in recent he, history, yes, but like right, when you go okay. back, right, right. not necessarily. No, but in ancient history, everyone Egyptian was a slaves, slave. but Egyptian yeah, slaves. Yeah, like in, in ancient history, anyone could be. A because slave, I thought yeah. that I thought that the sl- that those the like I know who you're talking about. I forgot what they're called in Game of Thrones, but I thought the it was Dothraki or something. Yeah, I, don't know. I thought that was kind of like an allusion to Egyptian slaves. That's what I thought he was aiming at. It's like oh, this is a vague allusion because he's not that great a writer. He's just he's just gotten. Stories about history and tweaked them. And just being like, yeah, it's a dragon though. Oh, it's fantasy. Well, I don't know. Look, whatever it is, maybe there was, but it's but like, just like again, you, sh- you. But don't you think anything can be construed as like, uh, it's like, why assume that everything, 
I don't know. I don't think, I think quotas are so silly to quotas? such a- Quotas? Where did that come does from? What that got to do with <laughs> Everything. Slavery. Everything. I'll, I'll, just quote, yeah, I'll, I'll, tell, I'll tell you how. Now, you know what? I'll He's you, actually I'll, right. I'll explain yeah. it if you if don't understand. If that slave army had quotas, if it was that a, would be insane. Would, and that really <laughs> does show where we are. You're right. It is the decline. Thank you. You, no, I'm on board with No, what I'm telling you one. is like, ideally, it's like there should have been a black slave and an Asian slave. And it's like, it's like someone someone had to go at um the director of ni- 19, whatever the fuck it's called, 31 or whatever. And it's like, why was everyone white in that movie? It's like, because like, apart from there, there was like some Indians that fought for the English and there was, you know, indigenous Australians that fought in, in the wars. But it's like, it was historic. He, he, it was a film that was historically accurate. That's why it was. Well, yeah, actually, yeah. I'll tell you Apparently, why. there were more it was Indian- based in Europe in 1931. Yeah, yeah sorry. Like, apparently, there were more Indian fighters than there were white fighters. I read that somewhere recently <laughs> in the second in the First World War because of. Yeah? Well, uh, where the fuck were they? Well, they were fighting in the front line fighting They were fighting in like Southeast Asia. Oh, uh, right. But why they, they were more in terms of numbers. Yeah, World War One, I into because like the British was a owned front the there. British Empire. What yeah. in Bali? No, in like uh, who are they fight in Cambodia? The Japanese. Ah, oh, that's World War Two then. Oh yeah, but either way, they are. What was Japan doing in World War One? I? I don't know. Preparing for World War Two. But do you understand? Like, you understand yeah. my point? I understand your point. And look, this uh, isn't whatever. a nuanced it's point. It's like yes, there are many shades. It's like, you know, let's let's not. Let's not destroy art, shall we? Hey, you want to really cancel opinion? No, we don't. <laughs> no, <laughs> we don't. No, no we'll World War One based. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. I know what you is it yes. based? No, no, it is based. No, no, we don't want that opinion. So based. No, I know what your opinion is, and we'll save that for the up late pod. Shine up on Patreon. Yeah, yeah, yeah we'll keep it. For the I know update. what it is. Look, the next the next segment is going to be pretty cancel worthy as well. <laughs> so Fuck. let's right, let's right, keep let it for just, the just, up late. Make this is a teaser for the Patreon, no. for the Patreon only. You want to sign up and hear some really based opinions? I will defend why constitutional monarchies are better than democracies. Anyway, go on. <laughs> All right. Well, Panthera, on. Panthera, Panthera. <laughs> um, look, the second- Pantera. The next segment- yeah, Finally, some real music around mm. here. Look, the next segment I need you guys to be slightly serious for because I'm going to set the ground rules beforehand. All right, give me some vape. You can, keep the, you can have the vape. But we're going to talk about we Israel and Palestine. However, <clears throat> the internet is riddled with opinions. You're Give supporting Gaza or you're supporting Israel. We have a fact. And there is there, there no are point. aliens. Facts. We're all about facts on this. We're podcast. gonna. So what I'm going to do is there are no opinions are allowed in this segment. Yeah. I'm going to recount the history for people that are sitting at home. Look, a lot of people might know a lot about this conflict, but some people might not. And s- the people that don't know about con- about the conflict, they feel pressurized. To, you know, if they fall, if they say that Israel is good, then they're afraid that they've let the Palestinians down, or if they do the Palestinians, then they feel that they're anti-Semitic. So we're not going to go into that debate of mm. who's right or who's wrong. We'll let them make that decision. So hence, no opinions allowed. You guys can ask questions. Well, that's lucky because I don't actually have any opinions on it. So. But yeah, I'd rather say less, for and, and someone just to, who makes a career <laughs> opportunities doesn't have one about the conflict of our time. But but just to just to give a he- heads up on like where we stand, Jordan and I are big fans of Noam Chomsky, and Miss Love is a big fan of Gavin McKinnon. <laughs> no. That's where the we two will intellectual keep, heavyweights of our yeah, time. That's where we will. I'm a big fan of opinions. Noam Chomsky as well. I'm a huge fan. Of Noam yeah, Chomsky. but like, look, there's yeah, a point why I said to listen to him. Uh, okay, so we'll start Not off. True. Well, st- well, just it, and for and bear with me for all those people who already know most of this. But for the people that don't, I want to give a quick recap of how this conflict began and where we are today. So it starts off with the First World War. In the First World War, what is today Israel and used to be called uh, Palestine, uh, uh, Israel, Israel. <laughs> we used to be called. Uh, that's that's not a question. <laughs> you can say is I'm it Israel the, or dude, is it I Israel? I thought this was about facts. Hold your hand out. No, the other way. Bad. Bad. Not a question. See, you don't have to shun me, guys. <laughs> Only questions related to fact. Maybe the audience can give opinions. So it starts with World War One. During World War One, what is today Israel, and at the point at that point was like Israel. Palestine or Philistine. It was, uh, was Philistine? Well, Philistine is just like uh is another pronunciation for Palestine. Is it? Yeah, we call it Philistine. 
That's racist. Well, that's not racist. Phallic. You said phallic. Oh, my God. That's sexist. No, I thought Philistine was a word for somebody who's not cultured. That's what I thought. No, no. Getting to the bottom of the facts. <laughs> well, it's in Arab. <laughs> and it's... Well, and like, look, there's... A, like, <clears throat> you, most people say Gaza. Even I say Gaza, but it's like Gaza. What is it? Gaza. I'm not saying that. Anyway, well, you don't have I'm to. I'm saying it. It's fun. You can't even say it. You don't have... You have... Yeah, <laughs> his... 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 his Hey, <laughs> hummus. Only hummus. questions. Only questions. <laughs> All right, is it pronounced hummus or not? <laughs> yeah, the que- he's gonna he's gonna override. He's gonna fuck the questions. But anyway, go. I don't on. actually know. Maybe hummus. I don't know. But okay, so in the First World War, what is today Israel was controlled by the Ottoman Empire. <laughs> yeah, and the Ottoman Empire was versing the British Empire, and the British Empire pl- promised what today is Israel. To a whole bunch of people, they told the, um, the 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 what are today Saudis that were fighting against the Ottomans on behalf of the British that once we win the war and the Ottomans are defeated, we'll give you uh, what is Israel. Around the same time, so around the First World War was when nationalism was kind of introduced to Europe and. Um, these, the age of empires was declining. In the Austro-Hungarian Empire, there was a Jewish man who came up with this new uh, idea, which is what we now today know as Zionism, but it's basically Jewish nationalism. The idea was that uh, Jews in Europe are always going to be endangered and also cannot completely integrate with European society, so they need an independent homeland. And the British were promising everything to everyone. So they promised Israel to them as well, the Jews. Uh, and so bef- between the Second World War and the First World War, basically the it was just a statement that like within 10 years, we will uh, divide Israel between the Palestinians and the new Jewish community. So there were already Jews in Palestine, but the but there were European Jews that were intending on coming to Palestine. So they were saying, we'll give you, uh, we'll sort of divide up the state. But that was just an excuse because they didn't really know how to do it. And it was almost impossible to do anyways. But European Jews started coming into Palestine. Initially, they started buying land in Palestine uh, from absentee uh, landlords who basically had retreated after the Ottoman Empire fell, so they decided to like uh, sell off the land to um, uh, relatively wealthy Jewish migrants from Europe. And but most of the people working on the farms of this land were uh, Arab Palestinians, uh, basically Muslims, and that's where like the first sort of conflict began because pre. Pre during the Ottoman uh, during the Ottoman days, I'm sure there were like low time uh, issues between Palestinians and the uh, Jewish people that lived there, but it was nothing too intense. Like they lived peacefully. It was only after uh, basically uh, the immigration that um, things started to uh, get a little hectic. Let's just say so. So anyway, so that happens. The Second World War then takes place. And Palestine, or what was Palestine then, was relatively calm during World War II. Bizarrely, it was one of the most peaceful places at the time because the rest of the world was on fire. So the Second World War ends, and Israeli uh, Zionists or Jews now say, okay, now it's time for us to get Israel, uh, what Palestine to form into Israel. Arabs, Palestinian Arabs disagree. They say that this is our land. You have come here as you're foreigners to this. So we're not going to let you do this. And Arab nations alongside of them, like the, your Egypt, Lebanon, they all, uh, they all sided with the Palestinians. And then the first war took place in 1948. What ended up, basically, the, what ended up happening was that Israel won comprehensively. And... Um, what Palestinians call, Palestinians today call... Why were they backed up by other nations? They were... U.S. Or look, there's that too, but they were just better at it than the Palestinians. Pal- the Arab armies were not prepared for... Israelis were sort of... And also they were highly motivated because they had just experienced the Holocaust. So the need to get an independent homeland was, was very strong for them. So they... I think the motivation itself helped them a lot. And they won, but one of the big... Uh, one of the big problems that happened during the war was that 
a lot of Palestinians had to escape Israel and became refugees. Now, this is where the controversy comes in, which I'm not going to get into, but some accounts say that Israelis pushed them out. A lot of the accounts say that, and you, if you believe that, then you wouldn't be crazy, but some people dispute that, that they left on their own accord because of the war itself, that it was too uncertain for them. But anyways, whatever, what, whatever side you fall on to, the fact was that about 4 million Palestinians had to flee Israel until today they remain refugees and when people Where are they? in different places so they initially moved to surrounding Arab countries but now they live in Australia they live in the US they still have a passport that is given to them by the United Nations because they demand that they eventually want to go back to Israel so a lot of countries offer them citizenship some countries don't, but they don't want to take to citizenship because they want to go back to Israel. So that's what the right to return is called, the refugees wanting to go back to Israel. Israel till today does not allow this because of demographic differences. There's about 5 million of them. There's total 5 million Jewish Israelis. So they feel that we're going to, this is not going to be great for us. So that's one of the, one of the key issues. And that started in 1948. And Palestinians call it the Nakba, which is um, the <coughs> catastrophe because they just had to like, they basically Sorry. lost a lot of their land and they had to flee. Anyways, from 1948 to about 1967, Israeli Jews tried to come up with a two-state solution at that point. They wanted this matter to end. However, the Palestinian and the Arab position was that you're, you, the, why should we like, uh, why should we agree with you? Because we are morally right and this was our land. It's basically the kind of argument that um, indigenous communities would make. Like, why do we even have to negotiate with you? This was our land, you took it away from us. So morally, they may be right or wrong, but that's the position they took. To the point where um, around 1965, there was another war um, that was between the Israelis the Palest on behalf of the Palestinians and the Palestinians, uh, along with Egypt, Lebanon, Syria... And again, Israel won that war quite comprehensively. Actually, initially they were kind of losing, but then they won the war. And they ended up taking over huge swaths of land, which was not just Israel, but it, was, it included what, um, what was a Syrian Golan Heights and, uh, and the Sinai Peninsula, which was belonging to Egypt. So they took... No need to make up countries. <laughs> so they, they took yeah, up... Egypt. Huge swaths of <laughs> land in both of these areas. And understandably, <laughs> Syria and Egypt were like both freaked out. And also some parts of Jordan. So all three countries Damn. were freaked out. That you shit. own a country. Fuck. <laughs> so they were freaked out that um, uh, our, uh, our lands are taken over. So they quickly came up with a resolution with Israel. Israel basically said that you recognize us as a legitimate state and we will give you uh, this land back. Actually, sorry, Israel didn't say that. The US and the United Nations kind of asked them to do it. So that ends up happening, and then Egypt, uh, Syria, they all recognize, is, uh, they're one of the few countries that have recognized Israel, because Israel till today has not been recognized by, I would like to say a majority of Muslim countries, including Pakistan. Like if you look at our passport, it says this passport is uh, valid for every country except for Israel. <laughs> Straight up it says that. So Pakistan still hasn't recognized it, and most other countries. But Egypt, because they had to take their land back, they ended up recognizing Israel. Then... There was the 19th, basically then uh, <coughs> they were sort of defeated and they didn't know what to do. In 1974, they so launched a surprise attack on Israel, which is called the Yom Kippur War. And in the Yom Kippur War, the, Israel actually came pretty close to getting defeated, but they ended up again defeating their Arab, country, uh, Arab neighbors and Palestinians and again took over most of what is Israel today. And that was essentially the end of aggressive moves from Arab countries in the sense that countries like Egypt with using their state militaries to launch an invasion into Israel to take it because they were just essentially defeated. That was a strategy that wasn't working. And but that, also they've got nukes now. They've got nukes, but I think... Who? Palestine. Israel, Israel oh, has nukes now, which are not... I don't uh, think Palestine has missiles. I don't. Pal right. Palestine does not have a lot. But basically what ended up happening after 1974 was that uh, Israel came to the conclusion that we're more advanced than them. We're better at war. Fuck them, kind of thing. As in, like, what, every time we try to negotiate to come up with a two-state solution, we are, 
we end up going towards violence as well. And they are not completely wrong about this because the Palestinian position again was that this is not your land, fuck off. Uh, specifically referring not to Jews in general. There were a lot of Jews and a lot of Palestinians. And not when, Pal- when I say Palestinians, not just Muslims, Christians as well. So Christians and Muslims were on one side. And so they're, they're okay with the Jews that were living there before 1948, but they wanted the foreign Jews or the immigrant Jews to go back. And essentially, then you've basically, you've been living in a stalemate. Stalemate in the sense that no Arab country around them is strong enough or has the, even the political motivation to attack Israel. So the only thing that was left then was the Palestinians because they were like, well, we still have this problem. So then you, then we move into the uh, era of militancy. When they started launching attacks on Israel to achieve um, to to basically get some of their rights and all that stuff back. Around after nineteen sixty seven, the international community basically decided: look, Israel is going to stay there. You can't kick them out completely. Uh, the U.S. supported Israel a lot by this point now, uh, and they said that we need a two state solution. Why they support Israel? Well, from U.S.'s perspective, particularly after these wars, what the U.S. realized was clearly they are the supreme power in that area at the moment. So we'd rather side with a country that is that has the has demonstrated the capability to win wars than side with countries that have lost these wars. So just choosing the best partner in that way. The other thing is like straight up, like there's a lot of influential uh there's a huge influential Jewish community in the US that uh lobbies very effectively for um US's uh, support f- uh for Israel. And one of the other points that actually a lot of people, well, some people might not know, is that the evangelical community in uh, in the in the U.S. supports Israel too, and because of that sort of uh, crossover, right? Because history, I mean, it's the Christian history as well, right? There, they interestingly, so so the Christians believe that uh, in order for the Christ to come back, evangelical Christians, believe in order for Christ to come back and usher in, you know, uh, the kingdom, what whatever the you know that the second coming, yeah, of second Christ. coming of Christ. One of the requirements apparently is that Jews need to be in control of Israel. Mm. So they just do it for straight up the- theological reasons. Mm. So they're like really often are really pro Israel, but are anti Jewish, <laughs> which is uh, if like it's a thing, mm. bizarre. Yeah. Anyway, so there's that. So that's why the U.S. supports Israel, um, and so they came up with the U.S. along with the international community and the United Nations basically came up with the conclusion that the only way to solve this is a two-state solution. Two-state solution is, uh, which is becoming inc- incredibly difficult now, but basically they said what is today the Gaza Strip uh, and the uh, West Bank territories and East Jerusalem will belong to um, Palestine. Uh, Palestine and West Jerusalem, Tel Aviv, and all of that area will belong to Israel. And essentially, that's what the international community since then has been trying to achieve. But at this point, it is becoming very difficult to even achieve that because on one hand, these uh, these areas are not like together. They're sort of disjointed. Yeah. Uh, and so you would have to really do a lot of land swaps. And Jewish community in Israel don't want that because they believe that they uh, they have like a historical right to even the West Bank uh, territories. So they constantly keep moving into West Bank territories, which is illegal in international law, but is rife in Israel. They have moved there just to basically make sure that um, this area never goes to Palestine. I've seen the vice doco. And that's what's, it's a, that's what's causing the issue. Now, most... Muslim countries and the non-emotional Arabs, if you ask them today what the solution is, they would agree to a two-state solution because it's there's just no way you can you can kick Israel or Israeli Jews back to Europe. It's, it's just, it's impossible now. They're too strong in everything. So they would agree to a two-state solution. Israel is does not necessarily want that because they're like, look, we've managed to pacify most of these Arab countries. The only people that are now left are the Palestinians. And um, what's the real need for doing this? 
Like we can we can get away with it. And the other problem is from their perspective, and this is me trying to be neutral, from their perspective, they tried to do that with Gaza and they ended up creating a territory that was pretty hostile to Israeli uh, Israeli interests. So they look at it as like if we do create another state, then they're going to be constantly fighting with us. So what's the point? We maintain control and we make sure that we are uh, that we keep them, you know, in line. How many Palestinians are there? Um, in in Israel, so in Israel and Palestinian territories. In Israel, there's the twenty percent of the population is Israeli Arab now, and then outside of it, there's about three to four million people. So there's five million Jews and about three to four million, uh, um, three to four million um, Palestinians that live in the Palestinian territories in Gaza, and about another, I think, million that live in Israel today. So there'll be about even Stephen or maybe even the Palestinians would go slightly. If I'll tell the, you what the solution is. <laughs> Citizenship. Well, they that's Israel, the problem. Just make it all Israel and then make the Palestinians go into Israel and then they vote in their guys into Palestine. That's the ideal solution. But then I that's suppose the most, there's that, that's the ultimate, then they lose their identity, right? They, they, they lose their... They, were, they yeah, don't agree they to that. they gain political influence. And they gain what? 40% of seats? That's why Israelis don't want that. Of course they, they don't, don't want to do that. They Because they're oh. like... <clears throat> if I was them, I would be signing up for that deal. In a that's second. what John Kerry's position was. when This was when the, the, John Kerry, during the Iran nuclear deal, said that either Israel is um, uh, democratic, in which case it cannot be Jewish because of the huge population of Palestinians, or you go for a two-state solution. There's no, there's, you can't, there's no other solution over Just here. Just keeping them in stasis. So if the, the right-wing government of Israel is, how about there's another solution? We don't do any of that. We just keep the status quo. So well, what is what, what's what's the opposition there called? Something like the the Shantarist Alliance. I have it? no idea. In it, Israel? Well, but look. Probably run by Greg's uh, corner. This is. Uh, Who? Some senator. Oh. <laughs> I can't remember what the name of the party is, but Israeli politics is super fragmented now and the right wing maintains control. But in defense of the right wing, even the center left parties in Israel have not been able to come up with a very great conclusion to this problem. Well, what's their conclusion? They would be more willing to do the two state solution. Like Shimon Peres um, uh, and the Palestinian Liberal or- uh, Liberation Organization almost came up during the Clinton days, almost came up with a resolution, but that got sabotaged. So basically now you've got a situation where you've got one of the most powerful armies in the world, which well, is Hang Israel. on, why were they shaking hands with Jimmy Carter? What was that about? Because they're always, the, the, those were the Camp David Accords. So they're always, the US is always trying to broker a deal. Kibbutz. Go on. But mm-hmm. the deal I'm is <laughs> is always pretty unfavorable towards the Palestinians. And so it ends up getting it ends up not working because it, this is a really emotional issue for Palestinians. Like they and I, I if if anyone like if I I don't know how to like uh, convince you of this, they will before they accept complete domination of Israel, all of them will have to die. They will it's just too emotionally what strong do you make of that of point? issue. Just not to interrupt, but that's an interesting uh, you point. You only need to move 6% of the settlers to have a state. That's about... I know, and and 6%. I wish that wait, that wait, wait, happens. Wait, what did he say? You that's only need my, to move... Uh, like, uh, the, the, the fact that all of these different communities are intermeshed with one another, and it'll be difficult to create two states. So, so he's basically saying that you need to move a certain people into different well, areas. What you said. 6%. Well, basically you said. What you uh, said. He's talking about land swaps. I would love that. That's but not a high I number. don't know if that's going to be possible because a lot of Jews that now live in uh, the West Bank territories are not keen on this idea at all. They've formed like entire cities over there. It's 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 going to be it's going to have to be a very grand solution that everyone's on board for, and it seems to be not happening at the moment. Well, can they get citizenship in Israel or not? Yeah, not the West Bank territory people. They can't. Oh, they can't. Well, why don't they just move into another territory and slowly get in? Israel has literally put up walls. That's what the whole Gaza thing is. Oh, like, so there's a massive wall. Wait, so how many? Like so how many Palestinians live in like in what is considered uh, Israel? Israel. It's about twenty percent of the population. So I'm guessing one million, maybe slightly I mean, less than that. So it's like but th- those those is those Arab Israelis have citizenship. 
But the move to for an extra six percent doesn't seem like a dramatic move, well, considering know, there's already twenty. Saying, and I don't know his his details, but I think but it's not as simple as just moving six percent. Right. First of all, how the fuck do you convince that six percent people to move? So right now, all you have is a very very strong army in the uh, in Israel is basically versing one of the most least equipped and poor people which is the Palestinians. They've got no one. Even their Arab states have sort of abandoned them. And they keep fighting. They know that they're losing, but they're, and they, all, they end up, even a small thing, like this current conflict started with literally, Miss Love, four people, four families, four to five families being evacuated in a suburb called Sheikh Jarrah, which is in the Palestinian territories. Mm. Do you reckon that if Netanyahu was out, there would be... Something more productive happening. It's there just might that be. He's just been there for so long. It's permanent John. Because Allen. he gets his. St- <laughs> Israelis do not have an appetite to compromise. They are. They're becoming like quite because they keep winning these wars. They've become really um, headstrong. Arrogant is one word that they they're saying we don't need to do any of this shit. So if Israel, if Netanyahu, so Netanyahu is like in no mood to compromise. He, they think that they can muscle them. And they feel that the uh, the strategy of muscling them is more effective than compromising with them. Do you think that if Netanyahu, because he's an old man now, when he finally dies, do you think that his party will be weak? Because that's no, his opinion. No, no. What Netan- Netanyahu? Yeah, really? Okay, this is how I'm going to compare it. Netanyahu is basically Malcolm Turnbull that is being hostage to one nation in the parliament not agreeing with him and getting rid of his government. So he himself is not a crazy Yahoo, even though his name is Netanyahu. Damn. But he is representing an increasingly growing right-wing Jewish population that is in no mood to compromise. They believe all of Israel is theirs, including uh, areas that they took from Syria called the Golan Heights. Like they even believe that's Wait, theirs. can you say that again with the, with the uh, comparison to T- Turnbull just one more time? So Netanyahu is not necessarily ideologically super right-wing Jewish. Right. But he is in government and most of his strength comes from ultra right-wing factions in Israel who have no appetite to compromise with Palestinians. They believe in literally muscling them. And I don't want to go... And the two powers there that are brokering politics, is it theologians and uh, banks... I don't know about banks because corporate interest, I don't think is, it's basically, uh, yeah, people that are like super theological and uh, essentially uh, Jewish nationalists. Like who might really? be really so secular. money's not an issue. No, money is not an issue. Right now it's about land. It's about who owns yeah. this territory. So it's not necessarily about money at the moment, but. It's really weird, isn't it? Because it's kind of like a medieval conflict. But it's not. I want to. I want to stress this because it is not. Uh, sometimes we assume that oh, Israel and Palestine have been fighting since the beginning. Not true. Like it was actually relatively peaceful <laughs> for most of its. Uh, I mean, me. there were always. You go way back into history when the Jews were. Um, no, were, but it's not about resource extraction or anything. No, it's kind of just this real estate. Like uh, yeah, real estate, and it's our God-given right that we have this real estate. Yeah. So. Uh, West Bank territory, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, West Bank territories. Pa- one of the suburbs in that area is Sheikh Jarrah, which should technically, according to international law, should be part of what would be a Palestinian state. So, uh, the Israeli government started um, basically we're trying to get rid of a few Palestinians that lived in one of the prime areas. Based on the f- so, Jordan had initially given those Palestinians the right to live over there. But Israel was saying, this is Israel. Like you, you, Jordan doesn't have right to give you anything. And it sort of counters international law by saying, yeah, okay, so technically, if it's a state, then we're not supposed to take, take it over. However, Palestine is not a state, so we can legally take over. And so they start forcefully, we're trying to remove about five families out of the suburb, which was essentially a property dispute. Um, and from the Palestinian perspective, it was like, We've been living here since fucking forever. You can't kick us out. And they, again, the right-wing government of Netanyahu was like, muscle them, like, take them out. And that's what triggered the entire conflict. Really? So really, if they just the gave current five apartments, everything would be fine. 
Israel is saying that they tried to do that, but Palestinians are saying that uh, the deal wasn't good enough, and plus we don't want to move from our uh, ancestor. Well, they're not. Plus, they not like don't everything want to move be, from this, this is land. A, this is a long conflict. I wouldn't say it's everything would be fine. It's like been an ongoing. No, but if Spanian was there advising the government, being like, okay, this is how you get housing commission. Surely everything would have been alleviated. Well, Spaniard can I fix any problem, but we can't get him everywhere, can we? Yeah, it was a matter true. of five and he families. Want to leave the loo, unfortunately, mm, great. It's a great area. Sorry. It was a matter of five families. Israel could have, but it's. I think it's the. And this is, I guess, my opinion. But the strategy of muscling Palestinians is not going to work. Like you'll always be considered an evil tyrant. As like as long as your policy is that they just don't crush care. them, they're going all uh, Genghis Khan on this situation. Isn't their stance? Yeah, we're tyrants. So <sighs> they wouldn't openly admit it, but basically, yeah. And there's massive public support in Israel for that too. That's another point. It's not just Netanyahu. You ask a lot of Israelis today, and they would say that there is no other way but to fight. And you go to Palestinians, and they would say there's no other way but to I mean, uh, the army is mandatory in Israel, right? Yeah. It's mandatory. Is it mandatory in Palestine? They don't have an they army. They don't think they have an army, dude. What have oh, they got? Sorry. Indy's got a way. Do you oh. mind? Thanks. So. Um, look. Good girl. How good is she? Eh? Oh, she's, th- she's thirsty. Look. Look, that was a good. That was a good uh, synopsis. I actually have a book that my dad got me in hi- just after high school, and it's called "My Israel Question," and it's just a supposed to be a uh, basically what you've just given, like a history of the situation, and it's basically my Toad Rage Three because I never got around. I still haven't gotten around to reading it, but I'll read it one day. Maybe, hopefully. Uh, look, yeah. <sighs> sure. What's 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 the Biden administration's stance on it? Because I saw I saw Biden. Uh, is his situation the same as um, Obama's in being like two state solution? Basically, that. right. But right, at this right. point, the the idea of a two state solution is just like a like, phrase. Yeah, it's nothing yeah. Because like it's like uh, yeah. It's like it's like just a talking point. Where it's like, well, how would you? It's it's. It's not going to stay that way if they keep. It's just like they're not serious about a two-state solution. Like they're just right, saying right, that right. to like tell all the Muslims that you know we're still trying, but really they're not really doing anything about it. Basically, but they're but just it's either going to be just asked, towing anything that Israel says. But it's going to have to be a two-state solution, or I would imagine, or uh, the situation of granting citizenship, like making it. I don't think uh, Israel would ever agree to the granting. But there is there is that like I feel like there is that deep apartheid state because ideally you'd want the state to you know like usually when there's a conflict let's say apartheid meaning it's split meaning it's split but they've almost purposely kept it that way because they don't want to give citizenship to all the other Palestinians. But there is I I feel like there is that sort of it seems like uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Damn, she's thirsty. It seems like a uh, there, there's there's a there's a, a hos- history of hostility that I I from the outside looking in seems as though it just doesn't seem like there's a simple answer by any means because it's like there's there, there's that there hi- is a simple answer but there's I that mean, history it's... like will they there's that history of like hatred towards each other correct and the history is not that long. There's more of a history of hatred between Christians and Jews than there is of Muslims right. and Jews. Or for that matter, sure, but Muslims and Christians have a longer history of hatred than Muslims and Jews. Sure, but so this is... It's not like... This, this is the other thing that a lot of people just say, it's too complicated. It's really not that complicated. It just... Mm. This is what happens when you've got a massive power imbalance. Like one side is just infinitely stronger than the other side. So you don't think there's an ingrained hatred that is... Uh, that I'll, I'll give you an example. So at one point in the mid-2000s, Israel launched an attack on South Lebanon, which was controlled by an organization called Hezbollah. And Israel badly lost that battle, mm. which was actually one of their first defeats in, in, in modern times. And you know what? They stopped fucking with them afterwards. Right. Because they were... I thought it was Hezbollah that's uh, 
fighting in Pal- in, in Palestine. Is that not right? They, they, they go for the Palestinian cause, but they're mostly based in South Lebanon. Oh. So when you've got a force, they defeated Israel in a guerrilla warfare, in guerrilla warfare. And since then, Israel has sort of backed off from South Lebanon. Right. And that's how you, that's how like these issues are decided. Just a fight. Yeah. Whoever wins yeah. gets to keep it. Right. Right, but right now, the power imbalance is in, insane. Mm-mm. Israelis are way stronger than, um, than Palestinians, which is why even when it comes to like casualties, Palestinian casualties always dwarf yeah. Israeli casualties because yeah, Israel yeah. has fighter jets yeah. and like what uh, what Israel calls the Iron Dome, which is one of the most impressive um, um, uh, defense uh, uh, missile defense system that basically goes up and destroys all the rockets that are coming to. Right. So what you have is Hamas launching their shitty rocket that they smuggle, which basically yeah. falls somewhere in the in, in before anything, and Israel comes with their like massive jets yeah. and pounds. Uh, but, you, but you really don't think that <clears throat> you think so. You think it's based on on the power struggle, not a racial struggle. Is the is the yeah. racial struggle just kind of like a smoke screen that people use? It's like, well, they hate each other. It's like that's they, not that's no not. One, that's not don't you think that that's all struggles though? Probably. Oh, yeah. I don't think it's yeah, a yeah, racial struggle. Right. It's straight up a power struggle. It's a it's a it's. I mean, for lack of better terms, it's kind of like with a you know Australia and the indigenous population. Like it's just, it's a power struggle. One of them is weak, and the other. Right. Is I would say that Palestinians definitely have a much stronger moral claim, but um, they've also hey. look. It's like I said. I don't want to go into. Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't want to go into like the opinion aspects yeah, of it because, because I have strong opinions and. Yes, my strong opinions are anti-Israel, but like I've tried to be as neutral as possible in trying to explain the history. So it's it's up to you guys then to decide what you want to do. Like, there's already uh, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of people that are saying I'm wrong and this is this is but it's wrong such a, and yeah, all it's that. such a polarized. Palestinians also yeah, have a better legal ghosts. claim too. Palestinians also, I think, have a better legal claim, but I think legality doesn't matter when you've got like a fighter jet, you know. Mm. Anyway, so it's up to you guys to decide what you want. But uh, I, the only thing that I would hope is is that Israel rethinks its strategy of dealing with this issue. They're just being kind of mean <laughs> at this point. <laughs> yeah, look. Uh, and if they too, think I'm they too. can suppress Palestinians by violence, I don't know how to emphasize this that will not happen you have to literally get rid of every single person to completely muscle through mm. there's no what what israel is trying to achieve is not possible without a mass genocide and the uh the the palestinians that live in israel i assume they live reasonably peacefully israel they live in because yeah they live relatively peacefully because they're passive they're not fighting but every time an intifada happens or when there's like right now those loyalties are very seriously challenged. And if you ask those Palestinians that live in Israel that are Israeli <laughs> Arabs about who you support in this situation, they would say that, look, we have a decent life in Israel, but we would always go for the Palestinians because it's an emotional response. It's not a intellectual response, which is why I'm saying that Israel can never muscle it because it's not a matter of, uh, it's, it's a matter of emotion. It's self-determination. Like it's, They'll all they'll all die before they'll give in, straight up. Heavy. Maybe I'll read that book finally. All right. Well, I hope you guys enjoy this. How about we move? Like, let's do one more segment before uh, before we because I don't want to particularly end on this. So um, we've done the U. Okay, ah. Ellen DeGeneres show just ended. They canceled it for good. <laughs> Why? How weird is... I think it wasn't getting any good ratings after the whole uh, controversy. Really? Uh, yeah. People got over it. No, that's not why. It no. must have been why. why. I swear. No, I, th- I think she what was just... What else would it be? It was on for... Oh, what, yeah. Maybe you're right. Years? All right. Let me, let me read it? this article Not then from The time. Hollywood Reporter. Daytime's most recognizable face has decided her upcoming season, the show 19th, will be the last. The decision which fell to DeGeneres is... To have several years in the making, she informed her. So she is going, apparently the news is that she's going, she's decided to just do it herself, but that never happens. It's yeah, always, yeah, okay, so that's it's just always the, cover. the ratings, yeah. Um, 
Maybe she's just, yeah, she, that shit. She had a good run, though, yeah. and she's a multi-millionaire. That's bizarre. All I'm saying is they should keep the set exactly the way it is. <laughs> Every time I look at that, I'm like, oh, that wooden ball is That's very f- nice. I hate and that get wooden James ball. Corden. It's so, like, daytime TV, like... That's what it is. Like I know it is, but it, I guess I guess that is like a dying thing. That, no, maybe you're right. It's just it just it gives me like PTSD to when all I could watch was Ready Steady Cook, you know, or like you know like Dano's Direct. Yeah, it's like yeah, I don't know. What? So it makes you uncomfortable because it reminds you of Ready Steady Cook. Kind of, yeah. But that's why I like it. Yeah, I guess you're right. Look, I'm. You've not won me over watch on it, this one. Uh, but you've yeah, won me over on this finally. one. Finally, <laughs> see, peace agreements can happen. <laughs> and also, I was watching Ellen the other day. I think I was too harsh on it. She's good. Finally, I think it was really coming into its form just when it was cancelled. Really typical. Was it exactly the same show? Like, was it any different? Was well, it the- apart from the fact that everyone was on a giant Skype screen. Oh uh, yeah. But I think that it was pretty much the same show, surely. It was, was just it? her looking nervously into the camera, <laughs> not getting over the fact that she's been on TV yet. Yeah. And I thought that was the magic of she it. Probably and how are they going to replace that? Who else is going to be nervous in front of a camera? How did she ever get a job? Wasn't she a comedian? Yeah. Is she a good comedian? No. Right. And she still isn't, but she right. still starts with an opening monologue, and that monologue is so Does she still terrible. say, y'all be nice to each other? I mean, I'm assuming that she does. Because what did put a... <sighs> so yeah. many Because that was her entire brand, and it yeah. turns out it's she like was really, nice. really mean to everyone. Uh, I'm not surprised by it. Maybe she should have just made it. But isn't that what Ooh, Hollywood's Hollywood was supposed like, to be I'm like? A bitch. I thought, I'm yeah, I thought that's what Hollywood's supposed to be like. Who it's like we raz you, we uh, we do pranks on you. Like I thought that's what you needed to do in Hollywood back in the day. Like when it was like. Dershowitz and Brothers presents yeah, true. The Look, Knuckleheads. Yeah. <laughs> like, that shit was mad. Dershowitz presents The Knuckleheads. Yeah, hard enough, right. Hollywood. That's what I say. Yeah, look, but <laughs> ratings are ratings. Yeah, yeah, true. If you... I, I really don't know how you can survive, actually, that I think about it. If your entire audience are housewives mm. and you're known for being me. Yeah, that's not going to work. They don't watch me for a reason. Yeah. Unless she wants to get my audience of neckbeards. <laughs> and there's a simple solution to that, Ellen. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Ellen's show finishing is just the death knoll of, like, uh, mainstream TV. Well, I'm calling it. The internet might be getting bigger than mainstream TV. It's a big call, Miss Love. But look, <laughs> what do you say, my very successful uh, YouTuber Ellen friend? of Australia. That's right. But that's the thing. I'm just honest about the fact that I'm Ellen. Well, she's not honest that she's Ellen. So this, I just, it's just strange. That's what she, I reckon that they went the wrong way. She should have just rebranded. I guess it's just You're hard for me to believe. You're such a and you like Ellen now? Yes, I do. I think because it's I found right. out she's mean. But I guess it's hard. <laughs> yeah, fair. I guess you it's like, both need empathy training. What's going on? Yeah, here? well, she definitely. I, needs I just find training. it hard to believe that the, the her ratings were down just because of that whole thing. Maybe maybe they were down. There is a possibility. Well, they, you know the other thing that I think they might be blaming it on COVID. Have you seen all of the nighttime talk show hosts? Yeah, everything's YouTube? bombing. Have you seen their views? Everything's bombing. George, Everything. As soon as they You're don't have an audience there laughing at them, yeah. and then it's just them talking to someone yes. on Skype, they may is as well it, be watching me talk to Kevin Rudd. You know what it is? It's insane. Like you, I was, you know, check out Conan O'Brien's uh, yeah. channel. His interview no, yeah, yeah, yeah. with uh, fucking um, uh, Phoebe Buffet from Friends, what's her name, Lisa Kudrow, Two very famous people. Horrible, right? Like 10,000 views, 20,000 views. Yeah, like but again, equivalent it's to this fucking friends. podcast. No, but you know what yeah. happened? You know what's happened? Exactly what Jordan said, right? Because I've watched <clears throat> um, like a few clips of like Cole Bear, even Bill Maher, dude. Even Bill Maher. I, I love Bill Maher, but I was watching all of- I've Actually, l- I got a lot of shit last night. I've got a lot of uh, hate from the fans, For audience. What? Because I said Bill Maher was killing it. And they're like, you are very, very wrong. Bill Maher is not killing it. He is horrible. Yeah, but that's because strangely, there's people that watch this podcast and also watch Vosh. I don't know what that crossover is I don't is know about. what that is. 
It, maybe it's just the fact that Ali wears his hair like Vorsch. I, I don't know what the deal is. I don't know what Vorsch is, but... And my, you, it'd be so wrong if you did. Yeah, I'll just watch Porsche infomercials. Uh, but the point I was making was... <laughs> yes. I've watched all these guys to what you were saying without a laugh track. And it's just that thing of the Simpsons where they started to rewrite Itchy, itchy and Scratchy and it's really boring. They're just like... They turn it off and then it's like, and everyone goes outside and starts like running like those tires and like painting fences. And those shows, people are realizing. Suck. Yeah. Mm. Without the laugh track and without that energy, it's unwatchable, man. It's, it's really unwatchable, which is a testament to people like you and like PewDiePie and stuff. No laugh track, none of that shit. That's how you started. You learn how to build. You have to. You have yeah, to. They keep- don't under- I don't understand how they haven't figured this out with all of their market research. Re- replace the laugh track with a track. Yeah. You just have to put like a lo fi hip hop beat in the background while you're talking. But there's a reason why, you know, everyone under 30 just lives on the net because. They can get what they want when they want it from people that are catering to them specifically. They're not, they're not accountable to to any you know shareholder or industry or financer or, or TV station. It's obviously it's going to be better. It's gonna, it's tailored to them from people that have started from there, started you know ta- like by, by by making content for them. The only people that pay them are their audience. True that. It was inevitable. It's a testament to how dumb the American audience is. Probably. That that was just enamored for what, 50 years with, how you doing? Good. (laughs) Come on. We were too. Oh, he went there. We were too. I was was too. We watched Oprah. We watched, uh, you know. Wait, did we watch Oprah? Well, we Uh, did. We did, yeah. Oprah, Ready, Steady, Cook, Dr. Phil. Jerry Springer, all the hits. Like, that's all there was. And we ate yeah, it up. I think that those shows would still be fine in the age of COVID. Maybe not Jerry Springer because he'd just be on <laughs> Skype being like, hey, he threw a chair. Okay, he's offline now. <laughs> <laughs> what about, <laughs> what about this Springer possibility? Jerry Springer does not know what the internet is. Let's not go crazy. What about this possibility that Ellen's numbers weren't down, but since the controversy... She just lost the will to do the show. Yeah, that's a very that's that is actually a possibility. Well, because she's sad that she gets hate mail. Yeah, and also like she was pretty used to it. I nah. imagine that before that she was so wholesome that internet trolls wouldn't even bother with Ellen. It would just be a bunch of six-year-olds dancing to Michael Jackson and <laughs> only people watching that are going to be like, oh, she can do it pretty good, I guess. <laughs> I think Ellen's been replaced by James Corden. Move well, on. the one that they were going to... That's actually a suggestion that was flying. You're right. But the other one that they were going to replace her with is Chelsea Handler. How weird is that? That they're like, Ellen's too mean. Let's replace her with... The meanest person in Hollywood. Yeah. Right. And how's that going to work for daytime TV? Hey, Jordan, are you Chelsea Handler of Australia? <laughs> <laughs> who is she? I don't know who she is. Uh, I don't want to admit I'm, it, I'm but I am. I'm no, you know, you're not. Chelsea. Just look at me. I'm Chelsea Handler. <laughs> Wait, is this the, uh, is this the uh, journalist you went after from, the, from SMH? No, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> Did you like that mashup? What mashup? Someone fused your face onto her head, and I was like, "Oh yeah, yeah is yeah, it yeah. the same person?" I Do I have to you. answer that? No, I did not like that mashup. <laughs> That's Chelsea Handler. <laughs> Sorry. Miss. Yeah, look, dude, I am a boomer. I don't know who the fuck that is. And also, it, it's, I think the only thing missing Good well, catch. Indy is really killing it. But yeah, you haven't slept with Fifty Cent, so you're not Chelsea here. <laughs> yeah, but there's still time. But can we all collectively agree that? And I know very controversial uh, opinion, more controversial than the Israel-Palestine conflict. The net might burn out free-to-air TV. Sorry, sorry. Throw your daggers. Yeah, I don't know what it can compete with these days. Maybe high-budget reality TV shows. Yeah, yeah, and I can just milk that and put my face in between it, being like, "Huh, what an idiot!" 
Anyway, like and subscribe. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm still getting like that is insane in this day and age that I'm getting two hundred and fifty thousand views for responding to television. Well, it's a weird, uh, you know. People still have the rept- reptilian part of their brains, don't they? But like, I'm just glad See, that's that. That's an insult. Well, he knows it. What? I don't think he's reacting to fucking. I don't think he's reacting to fucking maths being like, yeah, my best work. No, oh, maybe maybe my reaction what to the Bachelor What about the greatest docker well, of all time? That is what I think. Oh, for fuck's sake. Huh? What about the greatest docker of all times where Jordan reacted to that Sky News docker with Malcolm Turnbull being uh, Kevin Rudd? Yeah, that was shows. great. Fly that undone. That was great knowing. Fly undone. Hey, has your fly open right now? I don't have it. Isn't that one? That's the trick. <laughs> Short-circuited the game. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, I think it's uh, we're out of time. Um, well, be kind to each. Other. <laughs> hey, and also love love each other, y'all. Love love each other. Thanks for oh, thanks for uh, tuning in. And if you want more of this goodies, or, or even more so, if you want the VIP experience, join up on Patreon. Yeah, friendly Geordie's podcast Patreon, and you will access deep dives. Basically, yes, what this but is, but us more. being less scared. Yeah, much less scared because it's live. Yeah, if you want to hear our real views on Israel and Palestine, you <laughs> no, know where to that's go. The, it's probably not going to happen. No, no, no. Well, we, we don't have real views. It was all learning curve. But yeah, like, <laughs> Miss loves to afraid. Yeah, Gavin is awesome. Just admit it. And Al Jazeera over here is uh, also too afraid. <laughs> Which, by the way, Jeez. Israel bombed. I know. Very unfortunate. There you go. I need All to right. look at the peace agreements. Just look at this. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. See you guys. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week. Unless you are a patron. Bye.